information is in the uh, chat. Okay, thanks. I think we almost there, good people. Okay. okay. So we are here. Did someone check to make sure that we are Facebook Live? But I'm, I'm pretty sure we are Facebook Live. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. So good evening, everyone. Again, this is Patricia Rump with the Pine Hills Community Council. We are recording Facebook Live. Thank you all for joining in with us tonight. I'm trying to, let me get out of here. Okay. Thank you very much. I was trying to get rid of this one page that's up here, but thank you for joining the council meeting tonight. We have a good meeting in store for you tonight. We have a special guest with the a clerk of the court here with us tonight. And so I just wanna welcome everyone that is here tonight and we'll go ahead and get started. It is 6.30. If you're not speaking, I will ask that you will mute your lines at all times that you're not uh, uh, addressing the audience. So please mute your lines. So let's start open with the call to order. And uh, we just call to order. Can we get a prayer? Is uh, Pastor Joy, is, is on the line? No. Elder Dan Richbird, I see you on the line. Can you open up in prayer for us, please? Yes, we can. Eternal God, our Father, we're most grateful and thankful for this day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we pray, Heavenly Father, as we have assembled together in this format to discuss the business of the community. Father, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you would give us understanding. Oh, God, give us knowledge. Give us wisdom. This we ask in Jesus' name. Your eternal blessings. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's go ahead on with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. And I got it right here, I believe. Can y'all see the flag? Yes. Okay. I pledge allegiance. To the flag, to the flag. Of, the flag. of the United States of America, States of America. And, and to the republic, to the republic for which, which stands, stands one nation, nation under, under God, God indivisible, indivisible with liberty, with liberty and justice, and justice, and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you all. Every time uh, Zoom is good for changing up on you as far as format is concerned. So uh, there's a new format before me today, but I'm glad to be here. I look like it's a little delay. Am I delaying talking? No. Okay, we're good. I guess it's just me. Again, welcome to the Pine Hills Community Council Community Monthly Meeting. For those that's visiting for the first time and uh, those that's watched us on Facebook Live or here virtually, we are a 501c4 nonprofit civic organization. And our primary purpose is to uh, speak to the interests of the resident in the Pine Hills community, either on the local, state, or federal level. And there's about 70,000 residents in this Pine Hills area. So we have with us today, uh, before we get started into our uh, guest speaker, I just wanna go into some uh, housekeeping rules. Please keep your phone on mute. Uh, if you're not speaking. So we go ahead and do the approval of the minutes. I sent the minutes out yesterday or Sunday. So if you receive the minutes, I hope you had an opportunity to review the minutes. And for those that reviewed the minutes, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I move that we accept the minutes as printed. Okay. Is there a second? I second the emotion. Okay, good. I am not liking the way this thing is coming up. I cannot get to what I normally get to on this uh on this thing here. Okay. So the minutes has been approved. I need to thank you very much. It's been second by it's been a motion by Miss Van and second by Dr. Nichols. Is there any discussion? No discussion. So the minutes are approved. The next one is the treasure report. And Ms. Van, I do not have the treasure report. I'm sorry, because I'm trying to 
maneuver through this new Zoom look that they have here. Okay. And I cannot pull up the treasury report. I am so sorry. That's okay. Um, so the treasury report for the month of July, we had dues of $68.25. And we had advertisement uh, that came in of 3000 so the total income for the month of July was $3,068.25. Our expense for the month of July was $47.28. And that was for the pickup and cleanup in Barnett Park around the lakes. And so with that in mind, we had at the beginning of July, uh, we had $3,690.90. Our income was $3,068.25. Our expense was $4,728, giving us a balance of $6,711.87. In our savings accounts, we got one cent interest. So the, what we have in savings is $1,625.32. In our SunTrust saving, we got a six cents interest which gives us a total of $7,783.56. And so when you add all those up, our total uh, fund on hand is $16,120.75. Are there Thank any you, questions? Thank you. Are there any questions? Seeing none, can I get a motion to accept the treasurer report? I move that the treasurer report be received. It was uh, moved by uh, Elder Dan Richburg and second by Ken. So there's no discussion. So our guest speaker is here. Uh, our clerk of the court, Ms. Tiffany Moore Russell. I'm gonna share this screen with Charlene so she can uh, be able to um, make her a co-host, make you co-host. We are a little ahead of schedule, which is great. I wanna thank uh, our clerk for being with us tonight. I know she has a busy schedule. So we're sort of deviating from how we would normally take our council meeting because the clerk is here and she has an, uh, other engagements as well. So thank you for coming with us tonight. Charlene, you have the screen. Clerk Russell, you are up. Um, and thank you, um, Ms. Rump, for actually accommodating me and allowing me to go, for your ability to shift and move your meeting around. So I do want to thank you so much for your flexibility. So good evening to the Pine Hills community. Um, sad that we are still in this virtual world and don't get to see many of you, but it's important that we continue to stay safe. So we will do what we have to do to do so. Um, while Charlene is sharing her screen, um, I'll wait. I still see Patricia, Charlene. There we go. I'll be good. Yes. There we go. All right, next slide, please. So here's just a brief overview. I know I've been to you um, over the six years that I've served as your clerk, but here's just our quick agenda of what I'm going to share with you um, on this session. And again, thank you. Um, to Patricia for inviting us to continue to make sure that you're knowledgeable about what's happening in your clerk's office. So next slide. So I wanna just remind you, I've shared with this with you before, that who we are as the clerk is we are a constitutional office, but we are administrative and ministerial. So what does that mean to you? That means that the clerk doesn't set policy, right? I don't vote on any policy. I base my decisions and set direction and policies in my office on Florida statutes or administrative orders coming from the Florida Supreme Court or the chief judge of the Ninth Judicial Circuit. So the clerk does not have executive power. So I do not develop policy um, and nor do I, and so let me give you an example. The clerk cannot reduce your traffic citation amount. I don't have the authority to do that. Traffic citation fees are established through Florida law, and we just have to administer it and collect on the assessed amount. So that's an example. Next slide. All right, so we handle a host of issues, so we decide to throw every word out onto a whiteboard, and this just gives you a snapshot of the different actions that your clerk handles for you, from landlord-tenant, 
jury compensation, juvenile um, cases. We are trial clerks in the courtroom. Um, we, we issue marriage licenses. We marry people. We issue passports. So that's just a host of duties that we are responsible for. Next slide. So I'm a big believer that the clerk is the gateway to the court system. We maintain over 67 million, million digital court documents and millions of paper wow. records. Yes. Um, and even though we have moved and shifted to a digital, we still have a lot of older cases that are in our warehouse that are still paper um, that we're still trying to digitize. And the reason why we still have them is because of statute of limitations in Florida. Most criminal cases have to stay around for a long time. But we also maintain evidence. We have what we call a criminal evidence vault and a civil vault. So if you can imagine what you think is in that vault, it's probably true, right? Uh, we for money. If it was admitted in the case, we have to maintain it according to Florida law. Um, and but we have to make sure that we perform these duties that are critical to our justice system, so that we can make sure that our judges, law enforcement, and everyone has accurate information and data to protect you, the public. All right, next slide. So we are the information hub. The clerk's office is the keeper of the record. So we have all the data. You heard me mention sixty-seven million files and digital records. So we have to interact with judges, attorneys, the parties, different state agencies, um, Department of Revenue, the Attorney General, um, Department of Child Support, all these different offices we have to communicate with and we have to share our information with them. And so we have to make sure that our information is accurate um, and we timely submit that information. So we have, we, I listed a couple for you. Let me give you an example. Let's talk about Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles. We have to notify them when we, when we know that someone has failed to make a traffic payment so their license can be sus suspended. But we also have to notify them when they've made their obligation so that they can lift that suspension. FDLE MECOM is the report that we have to submit daily of anyone who's been Baker Acted because that report then puts that person on a do not let them purchase a weapon list. So if we fail to submit that MECOM report timely, then we have left some days open where someone possibly can now go purchase a handgun. So although it may seem very, um, very routine that we have to submit this report, that report is extremely important when it comes to public safety. So those are just some examples where we have to communicate with other agencies who are relying on our information to accurately uh, protect the public. So, so that's why when you hear me say we are the people of the record, we are then become that information hub and we call it the information highway. Next slide. So just to briefly share with you our locations, um, of course, we're downtown. We have an office in Winter Park, Apopka and Okoy. So for Pine Hills folks, that's the closest one for you or you can still come downtown. And um, we do have staff at the Orange County Jail because here in our yeah. circuit, we have, full, we have full courtrooms at our jail. So our, there are judges assigned to the jail as their regular assignment. So we have staff there permanently at the jail. And then we have a courthouse at the Juvenile Justice Center on Michigan. All right, so those are our locations. We used to have one at Goldenrod. It used to be a payment center, but due to COVID, we closed it because it was extremely small and there was no way we could really practice social distancing. And so after a year of paying on license fees, cable bills, we decided to close that and send those staff members to the Winter Park branch. All right, next slide. So just uh, my office is designed based on division or case types. So you'll oftentimes hear me say the family division or civil. So this is how we divide our staff up. So under the operations, which is the majority of my employees, we have the criminal division where that's pretty self-explanatory where you have felony and misdemeanor criminal matters, traffic, um, which is where you process citations, traffic citations. Um, and then we have civil. Now civil is where we have, you know, the traditional lawsuits, medical malpractice, personal injury, but that's where we also have probate mental health, um, estates, wills, and trusts, landlord tenant, all of that's in civil. And then we also, by the, you know, we include our marriage license and passport within what we call the civil division. And then we have a records management. Remember I mentioned our warehouse? Um, it still maintains thousands of records. So we have a 30,000 square foot warehouse that still holds almost millions of files. So we have a records management division as well. And anybody who's ever been to the courthouse, they're located on the first floor. If you ever wanna request a microfiche copy or a copy of something, that's where you would go. 
Next slide. And then we have the family division, which is where we deal with domestic uh, um, violence cases, domestic cases such as divorce, paternity, child support, all of those family type matters fall under family. And then we have juvenile and juvenile um, is where cases involving any minors 18 and under. And that's at that courthouse where we also have many port partners. We have a state attorneys at the juvenile courthouse, the public defender, DJJ, as well as DCF. So our entire juvenile division is out at the courthouse on Michigan. And then here in Orange County, we do have a call center um, where we handle almost 350,000 calls a year. I mean, that allows for us to centralize the calls that come into our office. All right, next slide. So I just wanna give you a quick picture of our evidence vault. Again, it's 1800 square feet where it's a secure evidence. Um, and again, it's divided by criminal and civil. And we are very strict um, with who can actually access the vault. There are only two employees who are trained and certified to be what we call evidence clerks. So no one just gets to work in the evidence vault. There are very strict rules when it comes to ha handling evidence. Um, because, uh, you know, Patricia, you're familiar as a former retired law enforcement, you know, there's a thing called chain of, chain of custody. And if the clerk fails to, you know, let's say somebody was convicted on a marijuana charge, but we didn't store the marijuana correctly and then it got destroyed because bugs got in it. Now we've messed up the evidence and this yeah. person maybe want to appeal their case. So we, we make sure we train our evidence clerks because there's a lot at stake if something should go wrong when it comes to maintaining evidence um, in our um, justice system. So just, you know, we have everything from a tire, you know, a bicycle, um, golf clubs, so it's a lot of great stories surrounding some of the evidence that's in our vault. So next slide. All right, so this is one of the um, projects that I campaigned on actually, and I'm very proud of this. And it's the Self-Help Center. We did name it after our late clerk, Lydia Gardner, but the Self-Help Center for me was my commitment to increasing access to justice. As an attorney by profession, I recognize that 85%, and there's actually studies by the American Bar Association and the Florida Supreme Court here locally with the Florida Bar has recognized that about 85% of our community will not be able to afford an attorney. Um, and God forbid any of you ever have to face, or you have to actually retain an attorney, but it's expensive. And so the self-help center is to be a place where it's not based on someone's income. Um, we don't choose between parties. It's we, you are allowed to come into the self-help center um, and, and seek legal assistance. Um, you can get an attorney consultation virtually now due to COVID. We do offer those virtually with our partnership with the Orange County Bar Association. Um, it's on the third floor of the courthouse and the case types are residential evictions, family law, excluding injunctions and small claims matters. So those are the case types that we help in the self-help center. Um, next slide. So as again, as I mentioned, you can come into our full service self-help center. It's fully staffed with clerks um, that can help you with the completion of your forms. You can actually also file in the portal. We have computers where people can work from. The attorney consultations are a dollar a minute, um, up to 60 minutes. Um, and we also make sure that like with landlord tenant, we partner with Orange County government and the bar when, it, when the mayor wanted to create his eviction diversion program. We made sure that the our office had those resources and information to direct those customers. Um, to, so we try to also partner with our other, other government agencies to provide service to the public. So next slide. Okay, so just a quick information, some changes that's been happening in um, 2021. So the Florida Supreme Court has amended their rule, um, Rules of Judicial Administration 2.420. And this really is important for anyone, whether you're an attorney or you're gonna represent yourself in small claims matters and some civil cases. You are now responsible if you are the filer to notify the clerk of any confidential information, which means the clerk is no longer going to redact on those civil cases um, outlined in this administrative order. So it's important that the public is aware that you now have to file a notice of um, confidentiality so we can then know to file that document. And there's some important things you must do. Um, and identify us also line by line, where is the confidential information and where we need to find it. Next slide. Hold on, Clerk, uh, Clerk yes. Russell. Yes. I know we're gonna take questions to the end, 
But go back, Charlene. I'm sorry, because I know you're on a time frame. Oh, it's okay. We're gonna have no, no, it's uh, redacting. I know what that means. Sheriff okay. Department know what redacting means, but everybody in the orders don't know what it means. You said to redact <laughs> the information. Thank you. So, thank you. You're right, Patricia. I just talk, talk, talk. Thank you. Everybody knows what I know. <laughs> so, redaction in the world of government it's, it's protecting your information. And so it's blacking it out. It's making sure that no one can put it up in a light and see what's behind the black mark. So now that we're in this digital world, you know, we don't take a lot of paper filings except from pro se customers. So in the Orange County, we actually have a redaction software. So when someone files a case, it gets sent to that first. And the, the system has been taught the 23 elements that are considered confidential by Florida law. Here your social that. security number that's you know that's an example and then there are some levels of security based upon the case type so for example a sexual assault case there is certain information that has to be protected um a case involving a juvenile um something you know has to be protected so there are some case types that have higher levels of security um so we have to redact that but right now due to the rule change the clerk still must redact for juvenile cases, criminal cases, mental health cases, but not for civil cases. Now it is the rule, except for um, medical malpractice cases, we still have to redact for. But in like, let's say a landlord tenant eviction or a small claims matter against your lawn maintenance company or your roofer, we would not redact for you. You would have to tell us by filing a notice that there is some confidential information in this document on page two, line seven, and we need you to redact it. Thank you. You're welcome. And once All again, right, I just I yes. just want to remind everyone to please mute your line. I'm hearing voices in the background, so please mute your line, please. Thank you. Okay, clerk. All right, thank you. Next slide. All right, so again, we resources for you we, on our website you can find all of this information um again we also have the notice of the confidential information form as well as a list of what is considered confidential you'll be surprised what people think is confidential versus what is actually confidential so that list can be found on our website and the section is called know before you file and again we just want people to be knowledgeable about how to access and work with their court system because things are all constantly changing and evolving every year Next slide. Right, passports. So yes, people are traveling. If you saw the yeah. pictures from the airport, people are taking trips. And your clerks is a certified passport agency. So yes, you can get your passport with us at any of our branches. Um, and so I will tell you right now, um, they are running about 12 to 18 months behind. No, weeks, I'm sorry, not months, weeks. I'm sorry okay. if I scared anybody, weeks. So if you're planning that New Year's Eve trip or your Christmas trip, I would say get your passport now. Go ahead and apply so that you're in the system. Because even expedited now is taking about six to eight weeks when that was normally the traditional time frame. So, and I, I would hate for anyone to have to rush to Miami to get your passport. And the, you, know, you have to do an appointment for that. So if you know you're planning to travel, you know, and you need to get your passport, consider the clerk's office and we avoid lines. You can schedule an appointment to do that as well as our website, which is myorangeclerk.com. And we also listed where you need to travel to re-enter the country. You now need a passport for those as well. All right, next slide. So again, oh, yeah. So just want to sh share with you um, some, go back one more slide, Charlene. Yes, so again, don't have to wait in line. You can make an appointment. Um, again, I just want to let you know, again, it's 18 weeks and it's up to 12 weeks, but you have to pay an additional fee to expedite that. So next slide. So in, in light of the pandemic, and actually before the pandemic, we were trying to implement innovative solutions to be able to work with the customers and they don't have to come to the courthouse. It is my philosophy. If you don't, no one wants to come downtown, deal with parking, security, if they don't have to. So one of the things I've always stressed in my office is if we can provide a solution to save your time, let's do that. So again, one of the things is the mobile viewing of court records. It's now available 24 seven and it's free and it's combat compatible with your mobile device or your tablet and very convenient. And again, it's at myorangeclerk.com and it's search a case or look for your case, look up a case. Next slide. 
All right. We also provide now court hearing dates online. We did a survey one time where we want to know who was called, what was the number one reason people were calling the call center? And it was to get their court date or their hearing date. So we started putting it out on the website. So it's kind of like, know before you go. You know, it also will alert you if it's gotten canceled. So now you can get your court hearing dates online 24 seven, either by case number or your defendant or party name or search by the date. Next slide. Again, you can apply for your marriage license electronically now. That saves the couple's time. They can go ahead and get that process started and then come in to finalize the process as well as we've moved to more e-payment options for you to pay for your traffic tickets, as well as a, you know, pay for criminal fines now. Before you could not do that, but now we offer that as well. So e-marriage and e-payments are a way to minimize your visits to the courthouse as much as possible. Next slide. My balance. People oftentimes ask us, how much do I owe? What do I have left? So again, this is also another tool that we implemented so people can know what did they have left on their case. Next slide. And then shopping cart, we create this shopping cart because now we want you to purchase your forms. You know, you don't have to come down and get a, a copy of a, a, a divorce decree and you want to file for your divorce on your own or you want to evict your tenant. You can now purchase those forms online without physically coming to the courthouse. So again, we have civil and family matters for evictions, divorce, um, and then you can, you can purchase that through the shopping cart, as well as if you want to request a certified copy of a document. People used to physically have to come to the courthouse if they needed a certified copy of a document. You don't have to do that anymore. We now have the shopping cart. All right, next slide. Um, just want to share with you that, yes. Oh, so I want to share with you that since I've been in the clerk's office, we've used less paper. Uh, we actually went through a less paper initiative to start cutting out files in the courtrooms. We no longer print out files anymore. Um, and we, we continue to reduce our footprint on the environment. So by having less paper, and we continue to look for more ways to share information to our partners without printing a paper. So Patricia, you better remember this, you get a printed report, have to give it versus now we can electronically give it to the state attorney or corrections without printing paper. So that is the goal is to reduce our footprint um, in our community. Next slide. So you all know I am your former commissioner. Community outreach is, what, is who I am, is what I do. I want to continue as the clerk. And so one of the things we did from a, is to make sure we can strategize on what's important to the clerk. So one of them is our Clerks Against Domestic Violence. We offer this every year, but we also recently did it virtually because we're in a pandemic. And we you know, partner with Orlando Police Department to do self-defense classes. And we also partner with Harbor House and to make sure we equip people with the tools if they find themselves in that situation. All right, next slide. And you all know about my legal matters. It's again, increasing access to justice is by educating the public. So, you know, we have one, co we have one coming up on September 9th and this is a post eviction discussion because we know that it ended on July 31st. So again, just wanna to highlight to you all, we have a post moratorium eviction update. Again, September 9th from six to eight and that too will be virtual. So we hope that you all will join if you're interested in that topic, but we like to offer different topics so that we can continue to educate the public. Next slide. All right, we are hiring in all major categories. So if you know someone who is looking for employment, Here's a list of all the areas where we are hiring. And so they can apply by going to my website at myorangeclerk.com. So next slide, Shirley. All right, if you wanna stay informed with my office, we, I, I issue a newsletter called Center Court. It's issued monthly. Um, so you are welcome to, you can register um, from my website, there's the link. But we um, also want you to follow us on, and that's probably, probably the next slide. But if you want information from us, Center Court is one way. And next slide, Charlene. And then of course, stay connected with us on social media. We are on all five platforms. So Facebook, we, we're on Twitter, Instagram. We have a YouTube channel where all of our former videos on the different panels and WebExes are there as well as um, in, I think that's where you can look for a job with Indeed. All right, next slide. All right, again, thank you all so much for allowing me to present for you today.
here's my information. But if you all know how to find me, Patricia knows how to find me. I think many of you on here know how to find me. Um, as well as you all know Charlene, who is now my outreach um, person in the office. So next slide. All right, I now open it for questions, Madam President. Thank you. Charlene, can we get back to the, okay, uh, there we go. There you go. Side by side gallery. Okay, I did, thank you so much for the presentation. Thank you for being with us today. And we're right on schedule. Are there any questions? Uh, I have a question if there aren't any yes. questions. Then, or, uh, I see Rosalyn hand up and then I'll have a question. Yes, Rosalyn, you can uh, unmute yourself. Rosalyn, you, you may unmute yourself. Okay. There we go. Perfect. I have a question for Ms. Russell. Can you yes. talk a little about the eviction process. You, you hear so much about tenants who were evicted and didn't have a chance to, go, to be in court. They, they just, the eviction notice was given, law enforcement came, took their, tell us to talk about that and what rights have and how can they have a day in court? So I will tell you in Florida, the eviction process is very quick. So the process starts like this. The landlord is re statutorily required to put a note a three-day notice, it depends on what they're being evicted for. If they're being evicted for non-payment, it's a three-day notice. They have to put it clearly on the door for the tenant to see it. Um, and then they have three days to cure. Cure means pay or reach out to their landlord if they dispute the amount, right? Let's say I disagree with your landlord, I don't owe that money. Why are you thinking I owe you 2,000 when I, my rent was 1250, right? Now, if the person fails, fails to pay, the landlord then has to, can then file a complaint. Then they have to serve the tenant and the tenant has typically seven days, seven to 10 days, I think, or maybe shorter, but you have to quickly respond. You cannot ignore a complaint. If you do ignore a complaint, that does expedite the eviction process. But if you, you know, file a motion to respond, file an answer, and if you are, if you're pro, you know, disagreeing with what's in the complaint, you know, you can file a motion to request a hearing with the judge, which is why I have the self-help center. Cause I recognize many people don't know that process. That's a very you know, complicated process. So I always tell people, don't ignore a notice when you get something from your landlord, do not, cause it will go really fast. And people do it, can request a time in front of their judge. Typically they get a mediation first. Um, but they really have to be attentive and respond. If they fail to answer, then the landlord can get a default judgment. And then all you gotta do is ask for a writ of possession, they're gonna come put them out. So you have to respond to the court proceedings. So if you know someone who's about to be evicted, they need to come to the self-help center to see somebody ASAP. Very good, thank you, very good. Is there anyone else to have a question? I saw a question in the chat box. What did it say? <laughs> oh, hold up a second. That's what this question in the chat box saying. Re give, an, give an overview of the escrow option for tenants. So, thank you. Oh, let me say this. Um, you can put in the court registry what you think you owe, but it you have it's important that you file a motion asking for a hearing. And, declare, and you asking for clarification on what the amount is owed in the complaint. You got to answer the complaint and ask for a motion, ask, file a motion to ask for a hearing. If not, then, and this again, I go back to, they have to go to the self-help center because you, you, some people oftentimes will write a letter to the judge and writing a letter is not asking for action. You have to, oh, our court system is you have to equip the judges with certain words. I am filing this motion to dismiss the complaint or I'm filing this motion to dispute the amount and I need you to establish judge, what is the amount owed? And then we can move forward. So you have to specifically, so you can put the escrow then shows in good faith. Like let's say Patri I'm Patricia's my landlord, I'm the tenant. And Patricia's evicting me because I didn't pay July's rent. It's now August 3rd. Patricia is saying, I owe $2,500 and I say, I owe $2,000. 
Patricia files for an eviction. I can file my answer denying the allegations that I failed to pay and put in the registry the 2000 because that's what I think I owe. And then request a hearing to dispute it. The escrow is there to show to the court good faith that I'm just not a delinquent tenant and I put the money there. Now, there are some people, um, and now I'm going to take off my lawyer hat. Let me just say this and put a pen in it. Don't quote me, no. I'm just giving you what I've heard people. So this is what the clerk said from the street committee, okay? Listen to me, y'all, okay? I'm, I, I'm, I'm just listening. People, something, some people are facing eviction and they, may, they know they owe the money, but they have enough to go somewhere else. And they have some decisions to make. Some people choose not to put it in the escrow. Because if the court rules that you owe that money, they're going to get release that money to their landlord. So I'm not saying people should do that. I'm just saying that's what people do. They have, they, people have to make tough decisions out here. Um, but it's important that if someone is facing eviction, they really got to talk to somebody, which is why I opened the self-help center. Because our clerks are very knowledgeable. Um, and we have... The manager of the self-help center is Roberta Walton that many of you know, who's also an attorney, but we have lawyers there for a dollar a minute. So for $15, you can get help with filing your eviction. Very good. Thank you. Thanks again. Yeah, I just wanted to make a quick comment. This is Landra uh, Warmack from the Orange County Tax Collector's Office, but I actually have used many of the services, including <laughs> evicting a tenant, um, and I um, actually used the attorney for the dollar a minute. That was the best $15 I have ever spent. I literally did everything they said to the letter and evicted a tenant that I thought that I would never get be able to get rid of. So thank you, thank you, thank you. It works. And I actually also got certified documents that I um, went and put in my little cart. I mean, it's just, um, it's, it's a simplistic system. I absolutely love it. So definitely wanted to put my personal testimony out there. Well, thank, thank you, you for that, Landra. Thank you. You are welcome. Are there any more questions? How much more time you have, uh, Clerk? I got four minutes. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> ask this question in, in four minutes. Thank you so much. You yeah. mentioned about uh, there's uh, files that's uh, online yeah. that, I could, that I could be able to view wow. certain cases and files online. But not mm -hmm. all cases and files are, are viewable online. Correct, give an correct. example of a few that is not viewable online. So I will give you an example. If someone has, has a mental health case, a Baker Act case, you could not see that. Because based on the, the, the security matrix, it has a higher level of security. And only the party involved, the judge, you know, or the clerk can see that. But a general person logging into my system would not be able to see that. Okay, thank but you. But like, you can go in and unfortunately, you know, you can see someone. Someone you can see if Morgan and Morgan is suing, you know, the East West Expressway Authority. You can see certain things. So the security matrix matrix gives people certain levels of access depending on your stats. So like judges okay. can see everything. Law enforcement can see a lot of the criminal stuff, right? So according to your status in the judicial system, you know, lets you get access to certain things. I'm gonna let you go, but we have come a long ways as far as the clerk of the court. Because I can recall <laughs> when I was first as an officer, when the uh, the courthouse was on, is that Church Street or what's that street where the- Oh yeah, it's where the old, where the historical center is, yes. Yes, and there. we were allowed as officers to go behind the counter pull our yes. own file, make our yes. own copy. <laughs> Remember that, Richburg? But they have come a long ways now. We actually did our own work. <laughs> yeah, and I just saw someone ask if, if their landlord is refusing to fix some things, can they put their rent in the registry? That's not what the registry is for. Let me tell you, go to the self-help center. That lawyer will tell you how to refuse to pay your rent. There's a process. So the question earlier from the, the um, lady asked, what rights do tenants have? There's the Florida statute also has tenants rights. There are rights listed in Florida statute for tenants. And so there's something where the, the tenant can put the landlord on notice. You need to repair the air condition or the heater or whatever. And you know, I, I'm, I've alerted you that you haven't fixed it. Say, say the sink is broke and they haven't fixed it. You can give them notice that I refuse to pay rent if you don't fix it within seven days. But I would tell you, sir, go to the self-help center and spend that $15 before you just put, because the registry only is tied to a case. 
We don't take money if it's not tied to a case. Okay, I got one hand. I'm sorry, Dr. Nichols, yeah. and, and, and this is the last question. Dr. Nichols, you're-, you're, you're Okay, all right, thank you. Mine's be fairly quickly, hopefully. Um, Mine basically relates to for during the pandemic, let's talk 2020, when there were many residents moving from up north to kind of hunker down and shelter with family in South Florida, et cetera. So these individuals are now, um, hope they're, they're in their own apartments and not aware of the self-help center that's available currently in, Flo in Florida, in Orange County. Is there a way for that to be more publicly, publicly publicized so that individuals that are in that uh, predicament can reach out for help because they don't know? So one of the things we try to do, um, and, and you know, we try to so advertise it on social media, those platforms that we have, um, we try to get as much free media as we can. So like during the summer when we did a lot of the legal forms with United Way in the county, the, the media picked up on that information. Um, and I, but I, I recognize though that until you're in your crisis, you don't remember that we talked about it three months ago. So I get that. Um, and so we just try, we, we have to rely on our partners, our community partners, such as yourself. We notify our churches about our services. We just try to use as many partners as possible because somebody could have missed the last news story we talked about, right? Because they, they right. weren't paying any attention because they went in eviction crisis then, but right. now they are, right? So that's where Pine Hills and Holden Heights and all these great associations help us share the news and the information as much as possible um, and just in encourage people to follow us on social media because that's where they'll be able to get those resources to find out coming to the self-help center. And if they find themselves get, receiving a complaint, we hope that they will come down. Rose, Rose, Rose Nancy wants to say goodbye. Rose Nancy. Rose Nancy. Hi, Clark. Good evening. Rose Hi, Nancy, you? Commissioner Hi, Sipman's you? office. I'm well, yes. thank you. Good to see you this evening. I'm the one who asked the question about the escrow option for okay. tenants. Thank you so much for answering that. I just want a quick kudos um, to you and your team, especially Donna Dion. Um, okay. She is always responsive to our um, requests from the office whether it's expungement or this type of tenant issues, because we receive a lot of the landlord tenant um, complaints in our office. And I'm okay. glad you touched on the registry part regarding the, withholding the rent from the landlord if they're not making the repairs. So thank you yeah. to Donna and your team. You're welcome. Thank you. I'll make sure I tell her. Okay. Thanks again. If there's no more questions, thanks you, uh, Clerk Russell, for taking the time out to share with us the Pine Hills Council and the Pine Hills community and the residents of what's going on with the Orange County Clerk of the Court. Get to know your court, a clerk, clerk of the court. Thank you very well, much. Thank you, have a good evening. Thank you, thank you, okay. thank you. So we will go on with our a meeting. I'm gonna share the agenda so I can remember how to do this. So I'm gonna share the um, agenda. I'm here, exit full stream. Go here. Can y'all see that? Nope. No. Okay, hold on one second. I'm gonna go into read more. No. I know someone said no. Give me one second. I'm gonna go back here. <laughs> go back to uh, full screen. You can go here to share screen. And this is where I am, share screen. Can you see that? But okay, that's yeah. the agenda. Yes. We did that, we did the treasury report. Now we're on the president report and I have one report to make. I'm excited to make this announcement. Someone tried to steal my thunder, but I'm gonna make this announcement anyway. And most of y'all know that we have been working with the Orange County government and that property off of uh, Powers Drive, 5590 Powers Drive uh, on the corner, Clare Corner Core Road and Powers Drive. They're wanting to build a liquor store and other things in that area. So I got noticed yesterday, and I've been sitting on this for a whole day <laughs> to share this good news that the liquor store license has been denied. And so uh, it was the, <laughs> the liquor store Yay. license has been denied. Yay. And this Yay. was a grassroots effort. Pikes Community Council, the, the community, 
uh, your efforts and coming together as a team and moving forward and not letting go of this. They denied it because the county did some more investigation and did some more research and that church is less than a thousand feet. It's 843 feet from the liquor store entrance door because the address is 5230 Clare Corner Court Road. And we thought it was 5590 Powers Drive. So I guess it all depends on how they position that store not knowing now they it has been denied. And so yeah. I uh, 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 that was good news, thank God, right. <laughs> That was good news to me when I got this on yesterday and I said, I said, I got to tell, I want to tell somebody, but I, I, I want to hold it to tell everybody, the community as a whole, uh, thank you for your effort. We went to several board of county commissioner meetings. We got our thoughts together. We had several individual meetings as a committee and we worked together as a team. And thanks to the Orange County government for not giving up on the community and doing some more research to make sure that everything was in compliance. So uh, I know some of you all might have received an email uh, tonight, but that email only came because I had told, I'm not even going anyway. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We deserve, <laughs> that was the news. I, I had teased a little, bit, a little bit on Facebook and said we had a big announcement tonight and that was the big announcement. The liquor store license has been denied by the Orange County government. Good job. How about that? Good job. Good job. Amen. Great job. <laughs> Good job. So that was my report. And before I go any more, uh, I know the sheriff is still on and they used to come on early. So we'll go into our committee reports first with the Orange County Sheriff Department. Then we go into our committee reports. And then there's another uh, uh, economic development legislative thing that we want to address along with our committee report. <laughs> So thank you, Orange County Sheriff Department, for being here. You have the floor. Hey, good evening, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. So I'll start out with our uh, Pine Hills year-to-date numbers and some stats for you. Year-to-date, <clears throat> Pine Hills is down 28% overall crime. And I'm happy to report that's across all categories. Uh, we're down in all categories overall as compared to this year, this time this year in uh, 2020. Um, and since our last meeting four weeks ago, we are down 14%. <clears throat> the only thing that's really no noteworthy for us uh, in this last four weeks is that we do have a spike in commercial burglaries, which is businesses being broken into overnight. Uh, the trend is between midnight and 4 a.m. And that's in the uh, Colonial Drive corridor between Hiawassee and um, Pine Hills Road. Uh, also, because uh, one of the frequent concerns in this group and other groups as well is the, uh, the traffic concerns and the speeders and the aggressive drivers. I would tell you that we have conducted 2,444 traffic stops year to date. And that translates into 851 citations being issued uh, year to date, just in Pine Hills. Um, that continues to be a, a, uh, an area of concern and uh, a regular source of complaint, if you will. And we uh, will continue to address those issues uh, in Pine Hills as well. As recently as last week, there's some more concerns about the Pine Hills and 50 area with some very aggressive drivers. And uh, it's a combination of, of resources that Captain Carter has, who's also on this call, who's, he's in the sector one, so he's north of Silver Star Road. He has some of Pine Hills, uh, my area, which is south of Silver Star Road in our uh, traffic enforcement section. We work very closely together to try to address your concerns on those. That's all I have for an update for the crime, but I, I'm certainly here to answer any questions or concerns that people have. Does anyone have any questions for Captain Ely? Ela? I have a question. Um, I actually, uh, my parents actually live on the corner. They actually live there. They have a, a fence that actually faces Dorsha Road, where you can see Dorsha Road, where Dorsha Road and Balboa are. And that has literally turned into a truck stop. Every week, I talk to Patricia about it constantly. 
there is a new 18 wheeler parked in the right of way. Um, there's low hanging trees. My parents actually had an incident where they tore a limb down and destroyed their entire fence. And the truck, that truck driver just happened to be an honest person and actually got them in contact with his insurance company and they ended up paying for it. But every, I'm literally making the calls every single week. The word has gotten out that that is where you park your truck. Um, so <laughs> it, I don't know it. So my, I do have a question. So my question is when officers pass down that area, if they pass down the area and they see a truck parked there, knowing that we have the new statute, is that something that they're gonna look at uh, knowing that it's not a commercial stop because there's not a store that they're delivering? that they're like offloading or anything. Is that uh, a stop that an officer just would make or is that a phone call that still has to be made to you all? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, ma'am, is that that's in my area of responsibility. So I will add that to a directed patrol list and I'll put that on on our list for our, our folks to, uh, to pay attention to. And we'll start the enforcement of that uh, that issue there. And just to let you know, for the truck drivers, generally we start with a warning. We try to find out who the truck driver is and warn them first that they can't park in the right of way uh, due to the county ordinance. And then we escalate from there. If they, if they don't comply, then you know they continue to park there, then we go from there. But we usually like to start with warnings to resolve the issue there um, and go from there. But Dorshire and Balboa Road is the intersection you're talking about. Did I get that yeah, correct? Balboa. Headed away from uh, headed away from 50. Um, it's leading into two subdivisions, and you know they just park under people's. And there are a lot of large trees. They just park right under people's trees with no regard for whether they're tearing limbs out of the trees. I've seen I've seen cars actually have to stop because the truck is is out so far that they actually have they affect the traffic. And the reason I'm asking too is because they may come like on a Thursday and the truck will literally be there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I've made the call. They might be getting the warnings, but I'm just wondering once they get the warning, they're like, oh, it's just a warning. And they know they can just sit there the entire weekend. But it is I know regular it, it, it shouldn't go that way. And, I, and I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that it doesn't go that way. So the warning is a written warning. It's not just a verbal warning. It's documented. It's entered into a database. So basically what that means is that I you know, if I get out with a truck and it's this tag, it's this make, model, and tag of truck, and I issue a warning to that driver, that gets entered into a database. So the subsequent deputy who comes into contact with that driver does a quick inquiry, finds out that that driver's already been warned, then then it's an escalation from there. But I, I'll I'll uh, I'll put that on our directed patrols, and I'm pretty sure that we can take care of that issue in a fairly timely manner for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Well, I also Nichols have said, a concern. I'm sorry. Hold, up, hold up a second. Uh, Dr. Nichols had her hand up, but then I oh, come to the, the next person. Sure. Yes, thank you. And thank you, deputies, for being online, Orange County, uh, Dennis Ella and um, partner. I am, I, I agree with Landra, is that we, we have to be diligent and persistent. And I know that you all are doing you, all that you can to be that and to enforce um, but at some points, there's that compliance aspect that has to happen. And I'm seeing a lot of the, the I see the, the same speeders along my corridor, Hiawassee. And as a citizen, of course, I don't want to address them because they, it might turn into a situation that I'm, I'm not willing to get into. And I'm not a law enforcement officer either. But again, it's the same cars, it's the same individuals, and you see them rearing their engines, et cetera. And the same cars and vehicles, as um, was just mentioned, parked along Baboa Road. And again, and again, I, I take pictures and I see the same tags and the same license plates that are doing the same thing. So at some point, we have to hold these individuals accountable and responsible for the behavior to change the perception of what expectations are in the community. And it's not speeding, it's not parking in the same areas over and over and over again, but it's knowing that it is unacceptable. So let's follow the law, let's follow the rules, let's follow the regulations as the rest of us have to do as citizens. So we, we have to press hard. And I know you guys are doing what you can, but let's yeah. continue to press hard 
uh, and letting them know that if this is not acceptable it's in other areas of other communities, it is certainly not acceptable here in Pine Hills. Yes, Thank you, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Hold on, Bettina. Uh, Maria had a hand up and then Bettina. Maria. Hi, Myra Gomez here. Hi, Myra, thank you. Okay, I have a concern. I live right on the corner of Powers and Balboa. That light at Powers and Balboa sees a lot of crashes. I mean, I've seen a ton of them. Um, one of the concerns that I have is the pickup response after a crash, where I'll put it into 311 and I'll request for them to come pick up the debris and it'll just sit there oh, yeah. for weeks. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll go out there and I'll clean up what I can if I feel that it's a danger. We have a lot of children that walk to and from Robinswood, Hiawassee, and Pine Hills Elementary Schools. So that's a danger to them as well. So the response time is concerning for the cleanup, but is it also, does it have to be entered or is it automatic? Is there an automatic way that they're, they know that they have to come pick up after a crash is reported? That's a good question. And then I also, um, I also had a concern because they hit my fence a lot and they've crashed it. And a lot of times they'll be um, hit and runs. So I'm not able to, or either we're not here and I don't get information for insurance purposes. So that's also concerning. Our neighborhood watch sign has been hit already twice within the last four months. And it's just, hang it's just all lopsided. It's just hanging there now. So that, that's one thing that concerns me. That area is hot for crashes. That's a good question. Uh, the first question that uh, Maria uh, mentioned, Myra mentioned about the debris that's left after a crash. How do we get that debris removed like a fender or whatever that's there that picked up on the crash and put on the, on the curb? What's the process in getting that re uh, removed? Did anyone answer that? If it's on the road, that's how roads and drainage um, okay, matter. Thank you. I'm sorry, this is Rose Nancy, Commissioner Siblin's office. Okay. Any debris that is on county right of way that you'll have to update, upload the photos if you have them to 311 app and send it over. Roads and drainage will come out and clear out the, the um, debris on the roadway. Myra, um, you have my email address. Please send me the information on the, the fence issue that you've been having. You said your fence has been hit quite a bit. Please yes. email that to me so I can talk to our traffic engineering um, so, we, so they can come out there, assess your area and determine a traffic calming and safety improvements. Perfect, thank you, Rose Nancy. Thank you. mm -hmm. You're welcome. Bettina, uh, Bettina. <clears throat> Yes, um, I also have a, uh, for Captain Carter in sector, sector one, we also have a con uh, truck that continues to pop. We've turned it in numerous times. It's on uh, Powers Drive by Oak Shadows. It's yes. there all the time. Mm -hmm. It never goes yeah, away. I mean, we report it and it maybe it might move, but it's back the next day. So what, uh, I, I don't know how it, it, if this continues to escalate and people don't want to get the message that they shouldn't be parking on the right of way, um, I, uh, what is the next step? Does that go through the sheriff's office? Does that go through, how, how is it escalated? Bertina, you just escalated it. You told me. So <laughs> tomorrow I'll tell my special projects deputy, he'll go down to Powers and Oak Shadows and he is the man with the tickets. So okay. hit them before, um, you know, we give them a warning, but after that, we step it up. Okay, so, uh, great. Confirm, uh, powers and Oak Shadows, correct? Yes. Yes, okay. very much. Full and then, and trailer. Thank you. And also, uh, every evening, uh, around five o'clock or so, I hear the racing. It's constant racing on Powers Drive in that area, Silver Star, Powers Drive. It's uh, it's loud, it's noisy, and uh, it's, con and it's continuous. Yeah. Uh, so I, I wanted you to let you know that I'm also hearing it because I know they're talking about Hiawassee and uh, West Colonial, but we also have the problem at Powers and Silver Star. And, and, and Bertina, and that's what I mean is that I want us to be consistent. Um, and this is Dr. Nichols again, and I know this, this is a constant problem. 
problem. And it's not just a two day, three day, one month, six month problem. It is ongoing. And the racers know, and apparently they know which corridors to hit. And it is Powers. It is Hiawassee Road. It might be Pine Hills, but I know that it is consistently where we are almost in a life or death situation trying to avoid these racers along Hiawassee Road heading north from, heading south from Pine, Pine Hills and Civil Star or from Civil Star and Hiawassee headed south to Metro West area. It is unsafe. And it is unsafe to the point where we're we're even considering possibly a moving because I I'm it's it's an ongoing concern. They're often they're on. They often are on, they're on, and it's not. It, I'm not saying that it's not being um, monitored, but it they are not afraid. The racers. So it's something that they feel that it's okay to race along these corridors and along powers. And I heard them on Powers. We were coming from a home on Powers. And it was horrible trying to these racers with these cars. And they, they, they're not afraid. And they don't care. Um, and we don't want to get into a confrontation, of course. However, we are concerned, very concerned. OK. I, I can, uh, sorry, I Patricia. Yeah, because uh, other people's hands are up and want to comment. OK, go, go ahead, Ian. Captain, I'd speak to the race or uh, issue, and, and that that is a uh, that is a, not unique to Pine Hills. That's that's a countywide, that's a statewide, that's a nationwide issue. And I'll tell you, um, as a sector captain, we, we have policies about what we can pursue a vehicle for, et cetera. Right. So, um, what we can't pursue a vehicle for by policy is we can't pursue a vehicle that was simply speeding. They have to commit a violent felony in order for us to be authorized to pursue a vehicle. So what these racers commonly do, and I get 10 to 15 of these a week, 10 to 15 a week uh, of people who flee from our deputies and all of these areas that you're talking about, they have the, they're racing, they're, they're doing all that shenanigans. They step on the gas and they flee. We are not authorized to pursue that vehicle. Thank um, you for sharing that. And, and they do know that. They do know that, which is why they do it. Now, sometimes with a tag that's that's uh, acquired, there's some follow-up that can take place. And uh, we can do some follow-up and try to identify who the driver is and properly charge people. But uh, it, it's very much a youth culture thing. And it's not unique to Pine Hills. It's all over the place. We run racer details as an agency in combination with the Orlando Police Department, the Osceola County Sheriff's Office, and a host of and, uh, Florida Highway Patrol, uh, multiple nights every week to try to impact this. Um, unfortunately, uh, you know, we have to play by the rules and they don't. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's frustrating. Uh, you will find nobody who's more frustrated about this issue than I am. Uh, we'll continue to work it. Uh, we'll continue to try to, to make an impact on it. And when we are able to, to actually uh, identify people, we do charge them appropriately. Uh, there's, there are things with forfeiture of vehicles and, and impounding of vehicles and whatever that come into play when we're able to do that. Um, it's a difficult issue, and I, I, I definitely I, I sympathize with with your feelings on that, and and I share your feelings of frustration on it. And uh, we're, we're we're doing we're really trying to do what we can do with the resources and the rules that we're allowed to play by. Thank you. I'm gonna get uh, Captain Carter, and then Kim. I I see your hand, Captain Carter. Be gonna uh, comment. Captain uh, Carter. Maybe we can uh, on that topic of the the racers one of the things we can ask a community to do is when you get with your county and your state legislators i would uh, encourage them to create a state law that finds the owner of the vehicle one thousand dollars for if their vehicle is used to flee from a police officer okay that goes to the owner of the vehicle i don't care who's driving the owner will straighten that out when they get hit with a $1,000 bill. 
Yes. So if you're letting your son drive your car and he flees from a police officer, that's a thousand dollars to you. Very good. So that that but, would curtail the shenanigans. Mm -hmm. uh, Captain Neal is talking about that. Yes, we do see on the uh, north, we see it everywhere. So mm -hmm. uh, reach in their wallet, reach in their pocketbook, and uh, take a thousand dollars out of you, flee from us. And that goes to the owner of the vehicle we get by the tag. Agree. To your point. And to your point. Uh, Hold on. To your point, Captain uh, Ely and Captain Carter, I, I know we're talking about Pine Hills, but having uh, uh, traveled all over Orange County as a, a probation officer, I know this is really heavy down Hunters Creek, speeding south of Hunters Creek, Meadowood on that back side of that road of Meadowood, speeding Boston down Orange County, International Drive, all parts of Orange County. So this is not specific, as the, uh, Captain Ela said not specific to Pine Hills. This is all over, all, all over, all over central Florida, all over the nation. You see these horrific traffic crashes. Uh, you can see them on the news from every uh, large city uh, traffic racing. They were street racing and there's a traffic crash and somebody dies. Um, very tragic, uh, very preventable too. Thank you. Kim, yeah. we're going to move on. Kim hand is up. And, and, oh, and, and, hello. So really quickly, I just wanted to kind of piggyback off of what everyone was saying. And I added my question to the chat. If we can request, and I don't know if anyone in here knows, how can we request speed cameras? Can we start a, you know, a request from the county? Do we go through the county commissioner's office? Because I know like in New York City, for example, there's speed cameras. So people, if they're speeding, they automatically get the ticket in the mail. Um, and that typically will slow them down because now it's affecting them personally and it's affecting their financial situation. So is that something that maybe how do we go about requesting that for Pine Hills and maybe even Orange County? That, uh, uh, go ahead. I, I can speak. speak. Yeah, I can speak to that. It's uh, that that's something that on a local level, you'd have to you'd have to reach out to the county commissioner's office to, to adopt a, um, a county ordinance to authorize those. On a state level, you'd have to have language. Um, you'd have to have a statute specifically created to allow that to occur. Uh, currently, the way that the speed statutes, there are no speeding ordinances in Orange County, but the, they're all state statutes. And the statutes require that a law enforcement officer personally observe the violation. And that, that goes for any moving violation. Now, we did have a few years of the red light cameras. If I'm not mistaken, Orange County has abandoned that program. I think there are a couple of municipalities within Orange County that still, but most of them have abandoned that, uh, that still have those. But um, that's something that would have to, for an ordinance level violation, what you're talking about, it would basically be a, uh, a non-moving fine violation assessed to the vehicle owner. That would have to go through the county to adopt that kind of ordinance. Okay. Thank you very much. This All has been, right. been a good information, good information. We could move on unless we got uh, one more question. We can take another question or we're going to move on to our committee because there's other items that we need to know about as far as changes coming in the Pine Hills area. Okay, so all minds are clear. Okay, so I'm going to share something else here on the screen. If I could pull this up again, share screen, go back to here. Share screen. We did this, the committee report. I want to share something that's coming up. That's coming up. Another agenda item. You can go back. I can pick this thing. There we go. Okay, we received a notice that uh, Whispering Oaks development is making plans, uh, uh, it's going through the planning process through Orange County to develop a apartment uh, multi-family living development off of Hawassi. It is located uh, Hawassi and Civil Star Road. If you know on Hawassi and Civil Star Road, close to that water tank on Hawassi, <laughs> it is <coughs> Civil Star and it's a little by that water dome, that blue water dome on Hawassi. So they're asking for a, a special exception and a variance to build in that area. And the special exception says that they want to 
Specs exception to allow a three-story multifamily development to be located 30 feet from the east property line in lieu of 100 feet from the property line of a single family dwelling district in use. In a minute, I'm gonna show you the picture, but I need to read this for now. The other thing they're asking for is a variance and a variance to allow a maximum building height of 43 feet in lieu of 35 feet. And they're asking this because, see if I could pull this up. So if I could bring you the, uh, bring you the address as to what they're talking about going to. Hold on, I'm going to share screen. This is it right here. I have it. Can everyone see the screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. The property that's in blue is what they want to build on. This is Hawassi Road. Mm. And this is the water tower I was telling you about. So they want to build on here. So the, the uh, Highest Community Council Economic Committee met and we had several discussions as to about this development coming here. And some, some of our concerns were, let me go back here. Some, some, some of our concerns was, were this. Is this parcel in a wetland or near a wetland? Let me backtrack and say this. I made a phone call to the, the planner who's the case manager of this case. We had a great conversation and she was very nice and answered the questions until I understood what she was saying. We thought, the council thought in our research that this parcel was in a wetland, a near wetland. After further study, we have several people in the council that are real estate in the real estate business. So we got one in particular uh, that's very thorough in her research and she went back again and looked. It is not in a wetland. It is not near a wetland. We thought it was wetland. Um, so if that's one answer that we, could, we got an a, a, a answer to. The other thing we had concerns about this complex coming up is that has there been a traffic study? No, there has not been a traffic study because it's still in the preliminary stage. The traffic study will be conducted once we get to the permitting stage. So right now there has not been a traffic study, but as we move forward, there will be a request for a traffic study. Our other concern was that, why was the special acceptance request for a development to be located 30 feet from the east property line in lieu of 100 feet. And, and the reason why they need to reduce that space is that it's next to a residential property. And because it's next to a residential property, they can only develop a one story. So in order to go up three stories or two stories, they have to have this special acceptance request reduced from 100 feet to 30 feet. Keep in mind, this is the same process that the other apartment complex went through in 2000 and, I'm gonna find my notes, in 2004. There's another apartment complex right next door to them and they went through the same special exception request and the variance request and they were approved in 2004. So that's why they're asking for that reduction in that property space. The other question that we had, we was concerned about why the variance is needed for, uh, for the maximum space from 43 to, to be escalated to 43 in lieu of 35 feet. They need that 43 in order to go up three stories. 35 feet will only allow them to go up two stories. They need 43 feet to go up three stories. So, some of our concerns, I was able to get answered to these questions by talking to the Orange County Planner. I'm saying all this because there is a meeting this Thursday, August the 5th at 9.30 with the planning and zoning to address these questions. I'm gonna keep going. Then I'm gonna let everyone else talk too. There has been talk that said, is this an affordable housing project? This project is not labeled as affordable housing. 
So at the moment, all I know is that this, this, this apartment complex will be leased out or rented out at market value. It's nothing that says it's affordable housing. Then the other thing of it is, we, we, we ask, what, if any, impact would this development have on the surrounding schools? That we don't know. So I'm open to the public. I'm gonna show you, um, this is Hawassi Road. There was pictures taken. This is that Agape church here. This is the water tower I was telling you about. This property is going to be built over in this area over here. This is the traffic one way going on Hawassi. We know that is a problem with the traffic on Hawassi. This is the property of Hawassi going the other way. I'm saying this, I'm gonna stop here, I'm gonna go here. I was saying all this to say this, I, if you wanna go to the zoning meeting, let's go to the zoning meeting. Here's the property again. This is not wetland. This is a pond, this is not wetland. This is where the other apartment complex is. I think this other apartment complex right here. So I plan on going to the meeting on, on the 20th, I mean, Thursday. So um, that's Westgate. Yes, thank you, sir. Westgate. Is it Westgate? Altergate? Yeah, well, it, it used to be Alta Westgate, but now it's just Westgate. Okay, thank you. So... We're gonna open this up for discussion. Any comments or feedback and to get a feel on who else is planning on going to this meeting on Thursday, August the 5th, so we could be on the same page to one accord. Let me say one, one other thing. The council has not taken a position. We have not come together as a board to take a position, yay or nay of our position. And until we come together as a board, then I can't tell you how the council is going to present. I'm going on Thursday on behalf of the council just to present our concerns. But we want to hear from the community your concerns and, and any kind of feedback that you want to give. I see Myra hand up first. Hey, Patricia, I do think that more affordable housing is paramount right now. But the, the main concern is, like you said, the traffic, that would be astronomical. I don't go anywhere during a certain amount of time, anywhere near um, Hiawassee and Silver Star because of the traffic. It is it's horrible. Awful. It is horrible. So I'm with um, you guys on the traffic. Okay. Thank you. Any more comments? Uh, Roslyn and then Ken. Roslyn? Yes. It's not only the traffic, but... Um, I believe, I mean, I live right opposite where they want to build that new apartment complex. So I see it firsthand, not just the traffic, but also since um, Westgate got there, we have, a, we have a more crime. We have um, the, the residents coming out. Sometimes they put their, their trash on top of their vehicles, wanting to, I guess, take the trash to the dumpster. They forget there's trash all over Hiawassee Road. Um, they come to the bus stop. They, th there's a trash can there, but they, they, they just drop the trash on the street right there. So if just with Westgate being there, and we have all that trash and all that, um, and what about the impact of the schools too? If we have another apartment complex there, and what will the traffic be like? What will the trash be like? So it's not just the, the traffic, it's also a beautification issue. Okay. And this is where... Um, Ken, I see your hand waving, and then after Ken and Carolyn. But, but this is where Roslyn is talking about. This is where she lives here in this area right here. I hope you can see this. This is where she lives here. And, and our concern is the traffic because right now, Westgate is a one way in and a one, one way, way out. out. Yes. You only come in on Hawassi, you can only leave on Hawassi. This mm -hmm. complex that will, will be here, it'll be one way in and one way out. This is private property. No, this is the, this property is owned by, I think Orange County Sheriff, I mean, Orange County government. This property is privately owned. This property is landlocked. So they can't build anything to get in and out of their property. Mm -hmm. but, what, but what I'm trying to make, that's, that's not our concern, but it is our concern that is one way in and one way out. So that will be our primary concern 
is the traffic, what they're going to do about traffic. Right. I'm, saw... I'm sorry, Patricia, if you look at at least Westgate is a little is further inside. But if you look at where they want to build this, this whispering o o oaks, it's right on Hiawassee Road. We don't know if they're going to build this far up, uh, Ms. Roslyn. This, okay. is all their, this is all their property. So we're not sure how far that they're going to start back. But, but this is all their property. So Ken Ham was up, then Carolyn, and then Myra. Ken? Um, would it be out of order if I made a motion that we opposed it based on the quantity of curb cuts on Hiawassee? So could I make a motion that we do oppose it? I can't take a motion right now, Ken, because are you saying a motion is forced? Uh... For the council to oppose it. OK. Help me out here because normally the council has a board meeting. So I don't know if the council does this in a public comment to take a motion to say we oppose it and take a vote because everybody on this line is not a member of the Pine Hills Community Council. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure how to handle this. You all help me out administratively. How do we handle this? Uh, I think we're still in the discussion phase. Okay, good, good. So I think we okay. need to we at least uh, go through the discussion phase and uh, it, you, we, we can make a vote uh, of the members, but if, as long as you have a list of who's on Zoom and well, they if are the members. members wanted, if the, the good point, Bettina, then I'm gonna get uh, Carolyn and Maria. That's a good point. If they want to say yay or nay, put it in the chat. And then I would know if you are a member or not from what you put in the chat. Let me do it that way. But at, at this point, just like Bettina said, we're still in the discussion stage because uh, is this a request for planning right now? Carolyn and then uh, Myra. And I, Madam Rump, I didn't see a hands, any other hands up before I hymned in here. Or uh, either Carol, Carolyn's is up, so I mean, yeah, yeah, Carolyn Ham was up. Yeah, and I'll, I'll go I'll watch. <laughs> Yes, Carolyn and then Maria and then uh, Dr. Nichols. Okay, go ahead, on. Okay, so I guess my question is, do we know how many uh, units will be there? Or yes, at, uh, one hundred. I think one hundred ninety-two or one hundred ninety-six oh, units. Wow. One ninety-two. One ninety-two. One ninety-two. Yeah. That's a lot of people. And considering each one may have yes. five, that's a lot. Of, yeah, that's a lot. Okay. Uh, so Myra? If I can. Say yes. that again. Um, oh, go ahead. Myra? Yes, my great concern is also um, the elementary school because they already have a lot of portables. What is the impact that it's going to make on the elementary schools or any of the schools? And how are they prepared to help the schools out? Like, what are they going to do? Okay. So that, that is a big concern. Okay. The school impact and the road impact. And like uh, uh, Rosna said, the uh, litter. Mm -hmm. and, and crying. And crying. Well, crying. Well, let me say this out here. Uh, I'm not for, uh, uh, Bettina, I see your hand, but it's, it's Dr. Nichols' hand and then yours. Um, I'm not for or against it. I have to be one or the other. Keep in mind that this has not said this is gonna be affordable housing or what it's gonna be. But keep in mind that uh, the county, not only Orange County, but Orlando as a whole has a need for housing all over. I know some of y'all says have, has concerns about it being a three-story as opposed to a two-story. But like I shared to the uh, Community Council Economic Development Committee, I have traveled as an officer all over Orange County, Florida. I traveled from Horizon West, even before Horizon West was a Horizon, Horizon West, going the back way to uh, Disney to uh, 535. I traveled down Hunters Creek. I've been on the east side to uh, Avalon Park, even before Avalon Park became Avalon Park. I've been, I take you name it, I've been in every crooked nanny in this area. And these apartments are coming up all over. So we got to have a strong fight to say why not this apartment cannot come into Pine Hills area, because they are coming up all over. 
So that's just my little two cents, but uh, we will go together, but we, we have to come together as a team. So I would like to know who's planning on going and speaking and let's have our facts together before we just go out and speak. That's the whole idea of this meeting, to have our facts together and say the same thing and be on one accord. Yeah. So I said, Dr. Nichols, Bettina, and then Sally. Oh, Thank Dr. you. Nichols. Thank you, Madam Rom. And yes, basically what I'd like to look at is I'm not opposed this, uh, of this opportunity as well. I believe as a community, we need to look at it as a SWOT analysis. Look at our look at the strengths of this coming in. What are the weaknesses? What are the, our opportunities? And what are our threats? And then address possible limitations. We know that traffic is a limitation and that's a risk. So as we put this together and to speak upon it as a whole, what do we want this to look like? because there are opportunities with it. We know that we need affordable housing on all levels, not just on the lower level income, but also offer an opportunity for those that are, our kids that are younger kids that are graduating college that have just found jobs at possibly Google or Amazon that need housing. So we have to look at all those different aspects and identify, yes, traffic is a, <laughs> It's a risk. It's, it's, it's going to be a limitation of that area. But what can we do? What, what can we ask of these developers coming in that they can do to help decrease and make it more, uh, more safety oriented for those that might move in that area? Because space and property is limited, but there's an opportunity for us to identify that as a community, as a team, what we would like for this to look like and be like um and it might not look like at it being oh we just don't develop it there because it is a opportunity for the the, the board of county commissioners and the community to have new housing so that's just my thought as we look at this economically um, moving forward and just quickly be before i go to miss uh, before i go to bettina and sally rose nancy i'm put you on the spot can I share that document that you sent me today? Everything's public records. Okay. I will only share, uh, uh, thank you, Rose Nancy. Because the document, I, I, I did have an opportunity to uh, skim through it and it gives you more detail as to what they are proposing. So I think once we read all this document and see what they're proposing, because they are proposing a, a clubhouse and different things. So we can see what they're proposing. It may answer some of our questions and we'd be more prepared on Thursday. So after tonight, I will share this document that Rose Nancy sent and you got the thumb through. I think it starts on page Whispering Oaks, but start on page 16 or 17. So flip 15. The document. what is it? 15. Thank you. Start on page 15 and read what you can read about it before we go there on Thursday. Thank you. Uh, Sally, and then Bettina, I'm sorry, Sally, you want to do me first or Bertina first? Someone asked for the information. Here's the information here, people, where the, uh, the meeting is going to be this Thursday, 9 o'clock. The meeting starts at 9. However, this item is the second agenda item, so we may come up at 9.30 as opposed to 9. It is in the County Administration Building in downtown Orlando. And it's this Thursday, April the 5th, August the 5th, at uh, 9 o'clock. Okay. Who's going first, Bettina or, or Sally? It was her turn first, if you want to go first. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind. Uh, yes, I, uh, I personally feel um, the, the uh, developer is requesting, as we request is too ambitious for that site. The fact that it has one way in and one way out, uh, the, uh, the fact that I, I, I personally went to the site too, took pictures, Talk to uh, the staff there in the time that the staff member has lived, uh, has been working there. They've had 66 zero, six accidents at the entrance of their apartment complex, 60. And uh, he said, it's, 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 uh, it's horrendous. I feel that um, it's, it's always location, location, location. Nobody disputes 
that we want to support housing. It's, housing is good, but dense housing right there is, not, is, is going to make all of us uh, a, worse situ a bad situation worse. Mm -hmm. I, I feel that, uh, and how would you like to live on Sandy Lane and have three stories over right 30 feet from your back door? That's what they're asking for, 30 feet. I, I drove down Sandy Lane and, and Van, you, that's in your vicinity. You know where Sandy Lane is. That's, that's fairly close to Lost Tree. And I, I just, I, and uh, it is an Orange County retention area. It's more than a pond. It's a retention area for runoff and it's going downhill. What's going mm -hmm. to happen when they start moving dirt there? How is that going to affect the runoff? We already had a flood at Powers Drive and Silver Star Road because they had six pipes going into the drainage, into the so-called Lake Star barrel pit. They didn't want to call it a pond. They call it a, <laughs> but you know what I, it's interesting what they call these bodies of water. So I, uh, I have concerns. I have concerns of the runoff down into the single family homes the fact that they're looming without a wall, without something that mm -hmm. would be a barrier between those single families and what could come off of the back. Kids, kids from Alta, uh, Alta Westgate, they, are, they were jumping the fence into a sandy lane. So I, I wouldn't want to, re to repeat that. Two, two points, Bettina. Thank you for bringing up two things. I'm gonna come to Sally. Two, two things, you're right. Uh, I did, I failed to put down here that we talked about the uh, runoff because we are concerned about once another building come up, where would that runoff water go to? So thanks mm -hmm. for bringing that up. The other thing is, Bettina, we discussed, this is the property here. Uh, the wall is not going to serve any purpose unless they put a wall around the whole thing. Because if a wall goes here. But why do they want 30 feet? They're they 30 need feet. thirty feet. They they, uh, they need thirty feet because the property is adjacent to a residential single family home, and if they do a hundred feet away, they cannot go up three stories. They have to do thirty feet away in order to go up three stories. That's what the lady told me. Does that does that does that sounds difficult? Well, then how do you? Then they're they're going to put some kind of barrier there between them. We can make this. We can make all these points out. I Keep mean, in mind, you can You're going to have a. You could reach over and touch it practically at thirty feet. Okay. Keep in mind these concerns, and I plan on going. Keep in mind they normally only give us three minutes to speak. So if I mm -hmm. go and 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 address my two to three minutes. I can't address everybody's concern in two to three minutes. So more mm -hmm. than myself need to come and express concerns because everything would, would, would not get addressed upon in my two or three minutes. Sally? Yeah, I'm just gonna suggest that, um, that the, the issues right now are the special exemption and the variance. That's, uh, that's gonna be argued uh, at the, at the at the at the zoning board yes. and and 30 feet if you're thinking of a football field 30 feet is 10 yards right and then 100 feet is 33 and third yards so if you look at a football field that's quite a bit of difference that they're asking for they're asking for 23 yards mm -hmm. you know, for you to give them right and so basically what you're talking about is the reason why they need it 30 feet is so that they can build more, more units. I mean, that's right. the why, come on, let's, right. let's just say, and a, uh, if I'm living in a house in a residential area and there's a three-story building 10 yards away from me, or there's a three-story building 33 and a third yards away from me, that's quite a bit of difference. That's what gives you that buffer. Mm -hmm. And so as mm -hmm. you to reduce that, so much by two thirds, more than two thirds, is mm -hmm. putting you right up to the line, right next to that house. 
And right. so that, that to me is not, you know, is not a good thing. And I would say that would be something that you would want to oppose because that's yeah. just, that's too much. Yeah. And, and going from 35 feet to 43 feet, you could oppose that. So if you oppose both of those and say, Pine Hills Council, if some residents come in uh, from that neighborhood and oppose it and that sort of thing, that will carry some weight. And also then if you reduce it down to the point where, no, they've got to be 100 feet away from the residential neighborhood and they can't build up three stories, they may decide this is a no-go. You may not have to oppose the apartment complex at all because they're going to say, well, I can't fit 192 units in there. I can only fit, you know, 80 units in there and I can't make my money back from that. So they're, they're going right. to make an right. economic decision. So at this point, what you need to look at as far as focus is, do we oppose the variance of the special exemption? And I would say based on what they're asking for, which is way too much, that that would be something you would want to oppose. Okay, thank you, Sally. Mm -hmm. Dr. Nichols. Um, no, I, I'm just going to just piggyback on what Sally uh, just stated, as well as Bertina. And uh, Madam Rump, what I meant when we, we look at this as a whole unit, as a community, as individuals that are online, is to look at what the strengths, weaknesses, and opportunities and threats are for this project, and then identify those special exceptions and limitations and identify specifically what we would like to see. Because that's the only way that they, they know that we're going to, if it's a 23 or 33 foot that we oppose to, which might cause the developers to look differently at a three-story versus a two-story versus a one-story versus a no-go. So those are the only ways for them to know because they're looking at this from a business aspect. Yes. They're looking at this for economics, right? Money, right? And it could be money. I'm, I'm using that as a primary, but it's an opportunity for them. But if we can identify what our, our what the community's concerns are related to this, going from the, the footage closer to the residential versus not going to, we can hopefully tweak some identity for them that's what's more important for us as a already established community. So I, my recommendation suggestion is for us to look at a proposed whole unit PowerPoint presentation. And although we might come in separately, but identify this as a whole, as a community, these are our, these are our, this is what we see as a strength. This is what we see as an opportunity for community for the community. And this is what we'd like to, to see as hope, hopefully some identified risks and limitations that we see with this new community coming in at a two-story, at a three-story, so forth. Okay, again, and hold on. I, I see your hand, I see Carolyn hand, and I see Ms. Rosen hand. And I'm going to, and uh, we, we're all saying this, basically the same thing. Again, the meeting is going to be Thursday, okay? Again, if those that could, so we have uh, I, Wednesday, I, hold up, Tina, I'm, I'm, so I can finish, please. Today is Tuesday night. We got Wednesday. The meeting is Thursday morning. Again, for those that want to come on Thursday morning, this is your opportunity time to come and express your concern. So uh, let them know that there is a community behind this, not just one person. I could go and say that I had a community meeting and there was 50 people there. And this is what our concern, but it speaks in volume. We come together like we did for the Powers Drive. Several of us showed up at these board account county commissioner meeting and we presented our case and we had meeting after meetings after meetings before we uh, went to the, uh, to the meeting. So again, this is the early stage. So please, if you're coming, you, you're gonna come on. But Tina, I see Carolyn Hand and Rosalind Hand. If, and let's say something different because we all said the same thing. It's just a matter of getting to the, to, to, to the meeting on Thursday. Carolyn, then Rosalind, and then Bettina. Uh, just a quick question. Where would we find the information regarding the complex that's being built? Um, I can email it to you. Okay. All right, thanks. Yes. Uh, Raza? 
I was just saying, is there a possibility that maybe all the people who are who are, will be attending and speaking that maybe have a Zoom meeting so we can assign topics to to everyone so that we don't go there in the same thing? Actually, Rosin, yes, we've had two Zoom meetings and, and I sent it out, you know, and 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 I realize everybody's you know schedule is different. But we've had Zoom meeting, and our only opportunity now to have a Zoom meeting is tomorrow night. Because this is tonight, tomorrow mm -hmm. night, the meeting is Thursday. So our only opportunity to have another Zoom meeting is uh, tomorrow night. Again, we're, we're in the early okay. stage, so let's not panic. We still have time to get our thoughts together and put together a good presentation and move forward to the next meeting. Uh, Bettina? Uh, <clears throat> I've been on a, like Sally, uh, I agree very much with the Sally, and I feel that we, as a council, now is the time to, uh, the weight of uh, the council vote is important in terms of these variances that they are requesting, yeah. and I feel that we ought to hit it where it starts, and if we uh, find that, um, that we've done our analysis and that Concerning the traffic, the 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 the, the uh, location of the site, the the fact there's only one way to get in and out. That perhaps if by uh, and the, the closeness to the Sandy Lane, that we uh, we do realize that that uh, we we should probably have a statement that we take from the council, in addition to other people who are talking. Because okay. Roslyn is with the safe neighborhoods, you are, and we are with the council. And then if you have some neighbors who are involved, uh, that will all make an impact. And uh, as we're there, um, the people who are attending uh, can really put the put it forward. Because what Sally said was true. And we the all agree with that. The distance they're asking for that variance. So we all agree with that, Bettina. We have been. We have said this over and over and, and, and over again. Yeah. So I don't want to continue but to have I, this same I would, I conversation. Would like, I would like to make a motion that the council uh, be uh, uh, speak against these variances. Okay. So uh, again, you make a motion, but we we need those here on the I'll chat. Second. I'll second that motion <laughs> to vote. Are there any questions? Are there any discussions? There's, there's no discussion. So all those in favor that's on this line right now, raise your hand. Then I must, I'll go through here. No, do your hand raise on the thing. So I can see um, your hand raise on the thing. And how then do I, I do that? that? <laughs> and then um, I can see it. Who are I, I members and, and, and who are not members? What's the okay. you, How do you? Patricia, I don't, I don't see how to do it. Okay. So I see, okay. I what see are we Karen. raising our hands for? I'm sorry, I missed that part. You, you're raising yeah, your hand. Uh, my, says, my, you are raising your hand that says I, that. I'm going to raise my hand. Pause, but I can't get my little hand to come up, so I'm sorry. Okay, so I'll we are raising our hand, hand that that the council will go on record opposing this project, opposing the approval of the special exception and opposing the variance. So That's we got um, so we got one, two, three, four, five, six, six what what keeps changing up? Seven, eight. Thanks, Allison. Hey, Patricia, this is Dr. Nichols. I, I mean, I, I, I'm raising my hand to oppose that. However, I'm going, I would like to see us do a series, a, a strategic um, SWOT analysis. We're going to do that, Dr. Yes. Nichols, but yes. we cannot do this. Uh, I mean, I don't mean to be short, but yes. I have heard your concerns about a SWOT analysis and we yes. will move forward on, on a SWOT analysis. But even though we go to the meeting on tomorrow, and express our concerns tomorrow, I mean, Thursday, they're not gonna say yay or nay Thursday. All we need to do is go and express our concerns and we, and we will have an opportunity later on to come back and put this together and we will put it together. 
But when we send out these announcements to come on the Zoom meeting, please come on these Zoom meetings. Okay, so I mean, Dr. Nichols, I, I, I clearly hear you and we will go on record and doing this, uh, this uh, SWOT analysis. But at this point, we're trying to see when we go tomorrow and say the council met and we had 37 people we met and out of these 37 people in the community, the, over the overwhelm of them says no. So there's 10 people with their hand raised. Hold up, there's 10 people with their hand raised that says that they are <laughs> against it. So Bettina makes 11. Uh -huh. and I make Van, 12. Ms. Van. Twelve. Could you make just ask if there are any members who are opposed to the motion? Okay, thank there's you. The motion? Yeah, okay. there's any members. So thank you, thank you very much. Is there any members opposed to the motion? I'm a little everybody hand. Is there any members that's opposed to the motion? Now, I don't I don't think that there's any many members opposed <laughs> to the motion, but I that with the details specific to the special uh, exceptions of what they're looking at doing on that property. I think that that's very important to the process. Okay, thank yeah, you very and much. It, it should be unanimous. It was unanimous. Being okay. unanimous makes a difference. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. I've got another item that I have to share. We have had this and I've got a Concerns has been noted, thank you. I got one more item that I, I, I got to share. There's another meeting coming up. This, this is important as well. It's gonna be on Pine Hills Road. And it's, uh, this is an item that's gonna be at 5601 North Pine Hills Road. And what the, this is off of Clare Corner Court Road in Pine Hills. This, this meeting will be August the 19th. Is also going before the zone of adjustment for the hearing. And this is one I'm strongly against. It is to rezone from a residential district to a C3 commercial district in order to construct an auto repair oh, shop. Man. Oh, man. oh, man. No, no. And then let me, let, let's see if, if I can pull this up, uh, good people. And what they want to do is. This is it right here. I got it. Thank you, Lord. I got it right here. Can you see this is not a very good thing? This is Pine Hills Road. You know where that Walmart is on the corner of Pine Hills and Clare Corner, Coy? Right. Yes. Across the street, there's a church. And if you go north on Pine Hills Road, there is a, a vacant lot. And they want to put, change that right here to a C3 to build a uh, auto repair shop. A C3 zoning allows anything. A C3 zoning means that they can store things outside. Oh, oh man, can, that's so bad. They turn into a garbage shop. Uh -huh. And that is a definite <laughs> no. So. Uh, is it on the, uh, it's a drainage ditch behind the church there. Yes. The corner, is there property enough property there? They're gonna try to do something. Let me see if I can pull this up uh, quickly for uh, for everybody so they can see. I, I thought that was a huge drainage ditch that had to stay there. I'm pulling it right quick. Let me see if I can pull this up. Y'all still there? Yeah, we're here. Uh, North. Here it is. North Pine Hills Road. So I really need my, uh, here it is right here. The Clare Corner Court people that live in this area to come out, Bird's Eye. Here it is right here, Bird's Eye. Uh, which board is that? I didn't get the notice. Is that the uh, planning board or the it's adjustment the, board or? It's the same board. Can y'all see this? No. Nope. Oh, hold up a second. My, my bag, I didn't share. I'm trying to multitask here. Let's share screen. Did I pull it up? This is it right here. I think this is it right here. That's it. So this is this is it. This is the property here. And this is this clear corner of Hawass, uh Hawassa, uh Pine Hills Road. Oh, That's this Pine is Hills Pine Road. So this is Pine Hills Road. I need to yeah. be able to there we go. 
if you look down Pine Hills Road, I'm going the right direction. Anyway, I'm going the wrong direction, but we don't want it there. Oh no, no way. It's, this is a pretty clean area in, in this area. There's a church here. Right. And there's another church there. And to put this thing on this corner of uh, Pine Hills, oh, to put it on this area is not a good idea. So what is that street there? Do you, that it's going to, is that, well, it's all residential, isn't it? Yeah, it's all yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So anyway, a C3, we do not want an auto repair shop in the zone as a C3 commercial. Oh, no, no. That no. means they can store tires outside, they can store anything outside, and right now that's a pretty clean area. Uh, yeah, you know what? Well, maybe Myra could take a look at that property for us, and because that, I thought, was part of Orange County's drainage. Okay. How did he get that site? I've seen people there. I wondered what the deal was. I've seen uh, a, a few people there working, and I was wondering, what was going on? <laughs> so those were our two concerns, Thursday and then August the 19th. Okay. So I will be there Thursday, host my will be there Thursday to uh, address our initial concern. We will come back and have a committee meetings to, to do this water analysis, to, to get our points together. After you all read over the plan and we'll, we'll come back together. And hopefully we'll be able to celebrate a, another victory like we celebrate the liquor store. That's, I shouldn't say celebrate. That's not nice. That's <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> did you, uh, Patricia, did you go down and see the other store on West Colonial? Were you able to go that direction? There's another item coming up. Also, what time is it? Sorry, y'all. 21. What time is it? 821. 821. Oh, y'all doing this call for an over two hours. Yeah, but That's, these are important things. Oh, okay. <laughs> there's another special, there's another variance coming up on the same day, August the 9th, where there is a restaurant that called Paradise. Bis Briscoe, that's what it called, Paradise Briscoe, is on the corner of Colonial Drive and Apocalypse Island. If you're going west, Dana, your, your hands is up. Go ahead, Dana, I, I think you missed the news. Dana? Yes, hi, everyone. I, I was just curious. I was a little bit um, late, but yeah, I am excited about that news. I, got, I did receive your email, Patricia, so that is fantastic news about the liquor store. Um, I just want to know, and you may have mentioned it, what is going on at the end of North Pine Hill and Beggs Road? They're clearing land back there. I was wondering, did you discuss that or does anyone know what they're doing back there? No, I don't know. And I've been asked that question a thousand times and I just have not inquired. Uh, maybe I will do that this week. But as you can see, there's a lot that has been going on. <laughs> but but thanks, okay. Dana. No, I, I'm not sure what's going on at at that property. Was Powers and what? Pi, um, Pine Hills and Beggs, North Pine Hills and Beggs. They're clearing oh. that area off. Oh. I would inquire. I keep saying I would inquire, but uh, that's why we have these committee meetings. And uh, while we talk about this, I'm gonna put a plug in here. We need members of the council to join on different committees. The council has set up committees. We have an economic committee. We have a membership committee, we have an education committee, a beautification committee. So we need your help in addition to being a council member to sign up on the different committees to help discuss these things apart from these type of meetings and I'll bring information to you. Go on our website at Pine Hills Community Council website, click on get involved or click on committees, find a committee that you wanna join a lot of the committees have our meeting date and time. We uh, have Zoom meetings and we discuss these items so that we don't have to spend a whole lot of time at these meetings to discuss these items. But like Bettina says, they're important information so that uh, we bring this information forward. 
This last item that Bettina talked about is the, uh, again, it's called uh, Briscoe Restaurant. It's mm -hmm. on the corner of uh, Colonial and a Poplar Vineland. If you're going west on Colonial, make a right on a Poplar Vineland. As soon as you turn right, there's a strip mall, about three or four buildings on the right-hand side, and there's a restaurant there. And they also ask them for a variance. Uh, there is a church in that mall area too. So they're asking for a variance to, uh, for a, I think we looked that thing up, a C4 liquor license to be able to sell alcoholic beverages within a restaurant. But that restaurant is within a thousand feet of a, within a thousand feet of a religious organization. So they need a variance to, uh, for their liquor license. And that was another discussion that uh, that we we had. Does anyone know the area that I'm talking about? I don't know. Oh, yeah, on on a pop -pop <laughs> island. Yes, I'm familiar with the area. Isn't there a school close by to this area? I, I thought there was a school. There yeah. used to be a school in that old Target, but they closed that school down. So Next to that old Target, there used to be a TJ Maxx or Marshall. And mm -hmm. uh, the uh, Clint Brown, I guess, bought that building, uh, rent that, uh, that section out on the corner. So his line of Judah, church is in that area. Uh, used to be an old uh, Marshall. It's right behind that. Uh, There's a Polo the Tropical in thank the you. Thank plaza you. as well. Yes. So right behind that plaza, Facing west is a, is, is, is a strip mall facing west, facing a pop of island. And there's about three breakouts businesses in that strip mall. And one of the businesses is a Bristol restaurant. So uh, any comments, Ken? Um, the new Asian supermarket is gonna be going in where the uh, Target used to be. Okay, thank you. So therefore, it's going to become more commercial. So a restaurant would be appropriate. It's not the restaurant, Ken. It is the idea that the restaurant wants to get liquor license within a thousand yeah, feet yeah, of right. a religious organization. So that's the variance. But, a okay, okay. but the restaurant having a liquor license is more appropriate than, than not okay. having a restaurant with a liquor license. The question comes down to, if it's gonna be developed into a commercial area for a Korean, I believe, uh, supermarket, it would be appropriate for a restaurant. That is one of the points to look at. Yeah. And I was gonna, I, I, I'm also gonna state in that same area is that when we're looking at our, our red lobsters and our olive gardens that are in the community, and we're looking at more progressive and we're looking at our younger generation moving forward than what they're looking for and to get involved in. Yeah, I, I feel that they're gonna be fire. There, there's that opportunity to as well, looking at economics because you have your red lobsters, you have your, your um, I mean, your uh, different restaurants that are long Colonial Drive on the West side. And most of them have within the seating to, uh, um, area to serve liquor, if you will, if it's a winery, if it's a drink, et cetera. Uh, a lot of the business corporations in the area, if they're doing a business meeting, they might enjoy that type of environment. So that's something to consider as we look at those areas. And I know exactly where that is, where it's located. Um, the old Target used to be there. I used to shop yeah. there. That shopping mm -hmm. center is basically empty and they're trying to increase the, the types of businesses that are there and also uh, look at a different level of income individuals that are moving to that area. So that's something to consider as we move forward is to not just look at opposing uh, possible sit down liquor licenses, et cetera, because we have that in our Red Lobsters in our Olive Garden. Okay. And and I'm, I'm glad we had this discussion because I, I've as we talked about this in our economic development committee meeting, that I need y'all to uh, uh, come to these meetings. As we talked about this in our meeting, after we hung up our conversation, I thought about three or four months ago, 
the council um, oppose a restaurant on Silver Star wanting liquor license. Pastor Joy is still in this car. Pastor Joy, we oppose that restaurant that's yes. on Silver Star that was less than a thousand feet from Pastor Joey Church. And all I'm saying is that we, we need to be consistent or if we're not gonna be consistent, I clearly hear what you're saying, Dr. Nichols. I clearly hear what Ken's saying. And I, and I presented that to, uh, uh, to the, no, I didn't, cause I thought about this after the fact that we need to be consistent or like you say, uh, have some type of reason as to why we're not being consistent and what we uh, uh, oppose uh, and don't oppose up. Uh, Carolyn Ham was up, and then Roslyn. Uh, well, I agree with her. I mean, we are in Pine Hills, and instead of opposing everything, we need to set standards of what we want here and how it needs to be done. We can't put okay. everybody out. Okay. Because if we oppose it in this area, they're going to find somewhere else in Pine Hills to put it. So we yes, have to make sure they make the best choice when they're putting it up. So okay. we can't oppose everything. And I agree, uh, uh, Roslyn. Okay, I was just, um, I think once we allow these variances, we, we don't oppose these variances, I think we are setting ourselves up because the variances are there for a reason. And, and you, you oppose one and you don't oppose the other. Um, I think that if it's, that is not, not the way it's supposed to be, it should not be. Okay. Any more discussion, Bettina? Uh, the only uh, the only question I have here when when we posed the uh, liquor license off of, off of on Silver Star Road, uh, Pastor Joey's church is a building. This church is in a strip mall, and uh, it's renting space in the strip mall, which is resident, which is uh, retail. Uh, that's the only other uh, you know. If you weren't going to oppose it. Uh, I would on those grounds, but I haven't heard from anybody from the church. Have you? They got a notice. I'm assuming they got a notice. Yeah. Are they going to be opposing it? Correct. That would be my question. If the church would be opposing it. If they have no issue with it, I don't see why we would have an issue. Right. Okay. That, see, that's, there's a difference between the cases. There are different scenarios and different situations. Okay. Right. Yeah, 100%. Okay, so it, it seems like the consensus, I'm um, getting things in the chat by it being a commercial and that the council would, would not take a position on that as far as being opposed to it. Right. Okay. The, uh, the, only, the other one was, uh, was commercial, but the fact that Pastor Joey's church was a building, okay. an actual building, <laughs> and he was okay, going to stay, he's, he's going to stay in that building. Yes. Okay, good people. <laughs> Any more discussion? It is 8.30, good people. This has been a great conversation tonight. Next month, uh, it's gonna be solid waste will be here. But I think moving forward, we need to take some of these meetings maybe in October, November, and sometime next year moving forward is to set aside some of these meetings for a community discussion as right. opposed to having guests come in. Because the, 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 the community want, I see, want to get engaged and, and discuss these issues. So we won't go every month with the guests, maybe every other month with the guests and give the community opportunity to discuss these items because they, I'm sure, more and more forward with different projects uh, that we would have to address. So thanks, everyone. Someone said, be safe. Everybody's chiming out. A any more conversation? Thank you, good people. Thank you all. Uh Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Thank you. I see some of y'all Thursday morning, nine o'clock. Bye bye. Thank you. Have and then I'll send everyone. out I'll send out a Zoom link for, for those that want to meet and discuss this more. I'll send this out next week after we meet Thursday morning. You hear what they have to say, and I send then send this out. Thank you, for, uh, representative that was here, Lance from the task collector, Peggy. I don't know if Peggy had anything to say, but this has been a Peggy. You got any last minute comments? I'm sorry. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. No, I don't have any comments. This was a great meeting. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, good people. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.